Meat Boy is back, and today we're keeping a classic pan seared steak recipe. So, whether you have a ribeye, New York strip, filet mignon, tenderloin, whatever it is, I'm going to show you how to get a nice crust on that steak and serve a quick, easy, simple, delicious pan sauce to go with it. Let's take a look at the ingredients. Real quick, some of you guys might have noticed we're in a new space. I'll give you guys a tour as soon as you buy enough steak so I can buy my mansion and then. I'll show you this place. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. I would never buy a mansion. I just need a TP and a beautiful Native American princess. That is all I need. So we have Wagyu tenderloin, Wagyu beef tallow, salt, and collagen broth. So these ingredients are interchangeable. Doesn't matter what steak you have. Could be ribeye strip, as we said earlier. This Wagyu tenderloin from Frankie's Surgery honestly is like my favorite steak ever. You know, you have the filet, which is super, super tender and not as flavorful, but since it's Wagyu, it does have a bit more flavor. So, so, so delicious with that fat and marbling in there. I'm really excited to have this. I had it for lunch last week. I was drooling over it, and it sears up really nicely in a pan because it's usually cut very flat, and it's pretty, uh, pretty small and condensed, so it's easy to get the crust on. You could use any sort of oil or cooking fat. I figured since we're doing Wagyu beef, we'll do the Wagyu tallow. Both of these available on frankiestrangemeat.com and the tallow and salt are available on frankiestrangefoods.com. This is our latest salt, really just a simple white salt, all purpose that you can use for everything, very affordable. I like this a lot. And you could have beef stock, chicken stock, any sort of really, well, you, you kind of want beef stock, but this is the collagen broth from Frankie's Free Range Meat. Very, very gelatinous, very full of amino acids and protein. Uh, we're just going to kind of deglaze the pan with this after we sear the steak. I do have an instant read thermometer. I don't usually use it because I basically eat my steaks raw, but if you want rare, you want to go for 120 degrees, medium rare, 124 degrees on the inside, and then medium is going to be about 128 degrees on the inside. Uh, maybe we'll do an updated steak temperatures video in the near future. So we got our oven preheating to about 400 degrees. I'm going to put our burner for the stove on a medium high heat. I do have a lid here. This is, you know, so you don't set off your smoke alarm and completely smoke out your kitchen when we are searing this. Almost forgot guys, we are gonna finish the sauce with some butter. You don't have to necessarily do this, but it is gonna help create a creaminess and give it a lot more flavor. This is our A2A2 raw butter that we have on frankiestrangemeat.com. Uh, normally you would want your butter at room temperature just for like spreading and stuff, but for the sauce, you actually want it to be cold. So we're gonna open up our steak. Our steak's gonna go on a towel. Look at that, huh? It looks amazing. And the reason you wanna pat your steak dry is because the moisture and water will prevent you from getting a crust. Then we want a nice light sprinkling of salt on the outside. Uh, the salt that we sell, since it's like fresh and natural, is very potent, so it tastes saltier than regular salts. A lot of the time, the regular table salt, you're just like completely dousing the food in it, and it still doesn't taste like salty enough. That's because of how much the salt is processed. Put a lid on the sides, too. Now, ideally, you could, you know, let this rest a few hours, let the salt seep in, but the theme of this video is quick, simple, and delicious, getting like the maximum amount for the time invested. So the difference between the Wagyu tallow and the regular tallow is the monounsaturated fat content, which can change the flavor and texture a little bit. We're just gonna put a little bit, we don't need much in here. These are uh, green pan non-stick. I have these on my Amazon shop if you guys want these. And then we're gonna put our steak in. Pan is a little too hot smoking, so I'm gonna lower the heat. And honestly, if you guys don't have good ventilation in your kitchen, like do this outside or use a lid because you're gonna set off your neighbor's smoke alarm. That's how smoky it's gonna be. We need a lot of heat to get a nice crust on this. And the reason I like these nonstick pans is because they make it really easy to get a crust. You know, the steak moves around really easily and there's a lot of contact with the pan and the oil. Normally I use a fork, but we're being professional today, so. That was no more than 30 seconds in the pan, guys. And look at that crust. If the surface is dry and the pan is hot enough and there's enough oil in the pan, you will get a crust almost instantly, which is good for flavor, but <laughs> bad for cooking the inside of the steak, which is why we're preheating the oven. 
we're not looking to cook the steak all the way through in the pan. We just want as good of a crust as possible and then we finish it in the oven. I mean, most people are familiar with reverse sear, sous vide and all that type of stuff. You know, you could cook the steak in the oven first and then pan sear it, but you know, in, re in regards to eating and the speed, it's, this is a bit easier. Because you can prep your steak, cook it, do all this stuff while the oven's preheating. I mean, guys, it doesn't look much better than that. I mean, you want to get really crazy, you can start, you know, searing the sides of the steak too, but that's more of a presentation thing. All right, there's no reason to uh, get any more of a crust. And if anything, you're going to kind of overcook some of the inside of the steak if you keep just searing the outside like this while it was cold from the fridge. So we're going to take our steak and put it on an oven tray. You could honestly throw the pan in the oven. I think these pans are oven safe. Oven's on 375. You could do 400. You could boil it too. But we just want to cook the inside. So pan off the heat so it doesn't get too hot. We're going to put the oven up to 400 because we don't want to be here all day. So now in this pan, we have, you know, all the brown bits from searing the steak. We're going to take a few tablespoons, a few tablespoons of our stock, which deglazes the pan and steams up a whole lot because the pan was so hot. So while our steak is finishing in the oven, we have time to reduce this stock. This is, this is another reason why the reverse sear isn't that time friendly and you couldn't really do this because you don't have the, the burnt bits in the pan. Put just a tiny pinch of salt in this. So if we put about half a cup of stock in here, we want to reduce it to about three tablespoons. As soon as the fawn starts building back up in the pan, that's where you want to stop. Like as soon as the brown bits start accumulating in the pan again, we stop because we want those brown bits to stay in the sauce, which requires a certain uh, viscosity. So downside to gas stove is it does give off uh, CO2 carbon dioxide with the gas burning in the room. Um, arguably not as bad as the magnetic fields from an electric stove, but you know, pick your poison. Collagen broth has really thickened up here. We're going to turn off the heat. Let this cool off a bit. Now this, <laughs> even just this, is delicious. But what takes it up a slight notch is we take a nice, without burning my hand, we take a nice nub of butter, cold butter, and we slowly melt that cold butter into the pan. You want to keep it moving to form an emulsion with the collagen broth. Hopefully my camera wasn't focusing on my hand there, but nice velvety sauce. You don't need flour. You don't need butter. <laughs> Just some expensive beef stock and a little time to reduce it. So we can check on our steak in the oven. I have an instant read thermometer here. And we're going to go in the center. I mean, we're at 91 degrees, guys. Like the, the steak is raw. This is honestly going to take like uh, probably 10, 15 minutes in here. The sauce should be okay to rest until the steak's done. I'm just going to angle this pan on the cutting board like that so it, it sits here because there's so little of this sauce. It's so concentrated. If I leave it flat on the pan, it's going to be kind of hard to scrape up. All right, Frank, let's pay attention and not overcook the Wagyu steak, please. All right, we're 120 over there, 113 over there. So this should, this should be about perfect to where I like it. We'll take it out. Safety first. So some people say to let the steak rest a while to prevent the juices coming out, but that doesn't really matter. Like obviously you can't eat it straight out of the oven because it's too hot, but give it a good two or three minutes and then it should be ready. You know, you can get your side dishes prepped. Uh, I'm having some homemade sourdough bread. Ooh, guys, doesn't that look good? Master baker, Frankie boy, better go to frankdishfan.com and buy my stuff so I can open up a bakery before I die. And uh, we're gonna have some white beans on the side too. So I got my side dishes ready. All right, it's been a few minutes. Normally, you know, you wouldn't really want to just cut the whole steak at once. I mean, you can. It doesn't really matter. You know, it stays hotter if you just keep it whole and you eat it as you go. 
because not everyone wolfs down a steak in two minutes like I do. However, for the purpose of this video, I did want to slice this open just to show you guys the uh, cook ingredient and the temperature on the inside. So, you know, what we're looking for here is, this is kind of rare, medium rare, but the main thing is that, you know, we didn't overcook the outside. There's not too much gray, if any, at all on the outside. So it goes from super nice dark crust straight to pink and red. That's going to be the tastiest, juiciest steak. So, you know, we have some kind of medium rare on the outer edges. And then as we get inside, this is basically a perfect rare steak. So fan it out a little bit. Okay. This piece is for the chef or if you want to give your dog a real treat or if you don't care, you know, I mean, like this little end piece, a little overcooked, a little fatty, gristly, but still delicious. So we have our filet. Just going to sprinkle a tiny bit of salt on each piece because, you know, we didn't let this rest and let the salt really seep in. So you'll get a nice amount of salt with each bite. And then our collagen butter sauce on top. Just nice bit of richness and fat for the filet. Not bad, huh? Frankie the chef's coming out of retirement to open his New York City restaurant maybe a few years from now, huh? I haven't been this excited to do a taste test in a while because, as I said, I had this Wagyu tenderloin last week. All I did was pan sear it and salt it. It was so good. Now with this preparation, I'm super excited. It's not that dark in here, but I don't think this light works. I mean, this new house, guys, I need one of every tradesman in here to fix this stuff because nothing's working. Ooh, this looks so good. Perfect, absolutely perfect. It's not that rich, it's not fatty, it's not greasy. You have an amazing amount of beef flavor between the meat juices, the actual Wagyu beef itself, the reduced collagen broth. The filet just melts in your mouth. Like if, if you paid $100 in a restaurant for this dish, you wouldn't care. You would feel like you got your money's worth. And bro, this meat juice, let me dip my bread in this. That is phenomenal. I don't think I could be much happier than having a Wagyu steak and some homemade bread. Very good. It's like, I feel like an Amish with the second job cooking all these meals every day for myself. I mean, this is phenomenal. It's delicious. If you guys don't make homemade bread, definitely make homemade bread, although that's unrelated to this recipe. And um, we mentioned where you guys can get everything. If you go to frankdashstefan.com, you'll see Frankie's Syringe Meat and Frankie's Syringe Foods, where we have all these interesting health products. Guys, please support me because at this point, I should have been able to afford like a nice Asian videographer so I don't have to lose my mind working 15 hours a day, never having a break. But hey, you know, for me, even just this, like imagine if I went to refilm this for like shorts or TikTok, it's... There's really, there's really so much content to do and put out now that I'm, I'm trying my best for you guys. Uh, you know how to support me, and I hope you guys enjoy this uh, delicious recipe. I really like it with filet mignon, but I think it will be amazing with any steak as long as uh, you have you know, the butter, the salt, the beef stock, and you uh, don't cook it too much. But as always, if you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And... I'll see you guys soon. You know, we have a lot more to talk about. I'm sure you guys see the water kefir here, the beans, the bread, the meal. Hopefully we'll do some more Dave eatings over the next few weeks. Listen, this steak is better than anything on this planet. I don't care if your wife is a Russian princess, if your girlfriend's the baddest Latina girl to ever exist, if you have the perfect Asian baby girl straight from Korea. I don't care if, if look, even if you're bisexual and you have your femboy fantasy and then some tall goth mommy, whatever it is, this steak is better than anything you will put your pee pee or have a pee pee put in whatever it is this steak is better you will never think about sex again after you eat this steak guys trust me new frankie's range meat slogan 
Frank's a nut job. Bro, you feed this steak to your girlfriend, your wife, whatever, your boyfriend. All they'll be talking about is make that steak again. They won't even, they'll be too busy. You could have sex with them and they won't even realize it because they're still thinking about the fucking steak. I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you guys, it's fucking phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Maybe it's, maybe my brain is just fried from heat exhaustion, so I don't know.